Today we're going to walk through what it takes to successfully launch a Microsoft Azure Kubernetes cluster using the Containership Cloud platform. To get started, log into Containership Cloud. It's assumed that you've already set up Microsoft Azure within Containership Cloud dashboard. To do that, you would go to your organization settings, look it in the upper left-hand corner, select providers, and then add the provider of choice, in this case, Azure. I went ahead and did that prior to the, making this video. Once that's set up, you're able to get started by pressing the Create button and selecting Cluster. Today, I'm going to be creating a cluster from scratch, so I'm going to choose the Create Cluster option. It's important to note that if you already have an existing Kubernetes cluster and just simply want to attach it to the Containership dashboard, you can do that using our Attach Cluster feature. I'll choose Create Cluster and press Continue. Now I just select the provider that I would like to launch on, in this case, Microsoft Azure, and then advance to the next screen. From there, I choose the region that I would like my cluster to be within, so I'm going to choose East US and press Continue. And now it's time to select my cluster options. So I'm going to give my cluster a name and call this environment dev, uh, then choose the Kubernetes version. I'm going to stick with 1.11, but Containership does support 1.10 as well. The next thing is the auth type, which is defaulted to SSH key, and the as user name is designated as Azure Admin. And then you just drop in your public key here and give a resource group name. So I'm going to call this test. The last step is to choose the virtual network name and designate the address space. From there, I'm ready to move forward and set up my machines. The first step is to set up your master pool. Um, by default, the high availability feature is disabled. If you would like to have a multi-master setup, simply enable the high availability feature and you'll notice the node count will jump from one to three. The next thing is to actually designate the instance types you would like. So this is going to pull from Azure. Simply choose the machine that suits your needs the best, and then you're ready to move forward with designating the subnet name as well as the subnet address prefix. There are additional advanced options available to determine volume size. Uh, for today, I'm going to keep it simple and just leave those as default. Now I'm ready to move forward and set up my worker pools. Similar to the last screen, you are presented with the option to choose the machines and instance types within your worker pools. So from here, I can choose from my list of machines that are available. I can choose one and then determine the number of machines I would like to have in my cluster worker pool. You do have the option to add additional worker pools where you can create a different type of machine size as well as different node count. It's important to note that even post launch of your cluster, you're able to scale these both up and down each worker pool and add additional worker pools as needed. I'm now ready to move forward where I come to my plugin screen. In Containership Cloud by default will launch the uh, cluster management. That is what powers this dashboard, but you do have the option to remove some of the other features we have built in such as Prometheus as well as our logging feature. Uh, it's important to note that you can also re-enable those or enable those for the first time after the cluster launch. Today, I'm going to leave those all enabled. And now we get to our cluster summary. This is going to give us an idea of the monthly costs for the resources that I just chose to provision. It's going to give me a, a breakdown of what I did, so the region, uh, the name, the provider, as well as the version of Kubernetes. From here, you're ready to launch. Just press the Continue button. Containership Cloud is now going and provisioning the VMs on my Microsoft Azure account. Uh, this can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes depending on the resource size selected. Okay, it looks like our cluster is up and running. I'm going to go ahead and click into the cluster and I should see that my metrics are now online. You're ready to deploy your workloads to the newly created Kubernetes cluster. If you'd like the step-by-step -step walkthrough in a document form, feel free to go to the upper right-hand corner from within the Containership Cloud dashboard where you can access our documentation, as well as if you have any other additional questions, feel free to click the icon in the bottom right-hand corner and drop us a line and we'll get you an answer as soon as possible. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful in getting you launched on Microsoft Azure using the Containership Cloud platform.